we on now? Mm -hmm. Well, as you can see, we've got a different setting here from Open Gate Bible Fellowship that we hold the church service out at the ranch, and we've got so much illness going on right now at the different homes and the facility that uh, we felt it best to uh, wait till things die down a little bit. We'll see how things look next week. We're going to go back to 6 o'clock next Sunday night starting the first week in January. It's a better time for everyone concerned. For some folks not, but we'll have to have a, a program where we can pick up people and take them home, whatever we need to do. But anyway, for now, we're at our home, feeling it better to be safe. And After Christmas, I trust and pray that you had a good Christmas and pray for a happy new year. Far much better than what we've had here in the past. I'm not going to talk to you a long time today. We're going to uh, get right into it, not even do any singing or music, and we'll make up for that, of course, in time to come. Glad to have any of you over here tuning in. I wanted to go ahead with this. It would have been easy to just say, well, everybody's sick, and let's just let it slide, but there's so many people throughout the country that's watching these Facebook uh, presentations, and I thought it would be a shame for those that are either housebound, homebound, or hospital, or retirement center, and they depend on this, and some of the folks just uh, watch because they, they want to, and I think, Lord, in fact, just a few minutes ago, I got a call from a lady in Texas, said, I want you to know we're praying for you, and we've been watching your telecast, and uh, very graciously, she called, she said, I just want you to know we're, we're watching you, and we're praying for you, and for the church, which I was very grateful to hear from, from her, and uh, I wanted to talk to you today about a subject that we're everyone guilty all of us, we know the Christ as Savior. We're not exempt. We're still guilty. We still have a nature about us because we're still human. A lot of people think, well, I got saved, and so I'm filled with the Holy Spirit, and so therefore I'm just, I've transcended, and I've got news for you. We still have a sin nature. And uh, some even have a problem saying I'm a sinner saved by grace. Well, I don't. I don't want to practice sin, but I still sin, and I'm sure every day in word or deed or something that uh, we might not even be aware of. Sometimes when I pray, I say, Lord, forgive me of my sins and even those that I'm not even aware of because we all fall short of the glory of God. If you're going to listen with me or, or stay with me and read with me, get your Bibles if you would, and I'll give you a little time. The first, uh, the first passage I want to use as far as reading will be Psalm 19, verse 14. This was, this was one of my dad's favorite. He, of course, they, he loved the Word of God. And every time I read this, I cannot help but think of my dad quoting this repeatedly. It's Psalms uh, 19, verse 14. It said, Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. It says in James that the tongue can no man tame full of deadly poisons, it just goes on and on. I'm going to probably bring a message sometime the first of the year and use that particular passage. But it says, James 3, 8, it says in part of that verse, the tongue can no man tame. It also says in that same book, it says, if we had complete power over our tongue, we'd be perfect and we're not. We fall short of the glory of God. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time together. We thank you for your precious word, the light into our feet and the lamp into our path. And Lord, as we discuss these particular passages and do our best, I pray, Lord, that uh, the listener might have ears to hear, and that I might have ears to hear and a heart to open up to. And even though we've read it so many times and preached on it and taught on it, Lord, it's still so refreshing because it's your, your precious word. And I thank you, Lord, for your word. It's what we're, we're so strengthened that the Holy Spirit and Word of God cannot be separated. They're, they're, they're together. They're even more than galvanized. They're, they're mixed together, not to be separated. So, Lord, I pray as we study together and we talk together that you bless your Word, anoint these lips in my precious name we pray. Amen. I wanted to take a look, first at all, of all of that, that uh, passage that we read, Psalm 1914. Let the words... Let the words of my mouth. We need to be careful what we say. We're all guilty of it. I had to apologize to my wife a few minutes ago. I said, I cannot even attempt to do this message 
today if I don't do what I need to do right here. And, and it needs to be with me. It needs to be with you. If you know Christ especially. And it's, it's not a uh, suggestion. It's a commandment. And David wrote here, he said, the Lord said, let the words of my mouth, what I speak, and the meditation of my heart. I've thought about that so many times. What do we meditate on? What do we think about? You know, for years ago, I sang with a, a man uh, back in the early 60s. And he made a statement. He said, people tend to live on the level of the music they listen to. And I thought about that. Of course, I've used it all these many years myself. Not only the music, but what do we watch on television? What, what, do, what do we read in the newspaper? Or what do we read in magazines? What, what, what kind of words do we take in? Because that has an effect on our meditation. And what do we think on? What do we meditate? Where is our mindset? Where is our priorities? A lot of people think, you know, that you cannot be human and spiritual at the same time. You can. You can. But to be acceptable in his sight. That's what's important. Our Lord expects us to be human. He wants us to be human. He created us to be human, but not carnal. He wants us to operate in his system of his words, of his rightness, of his what he has to say to us in his word. He wants us to to use that textbook to live by. He wants us to, to even study to show ourselves approved unto God a work and deal not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So we can not only take it in, first of all, ourselves, but where we can give it to others. In the process, we let our light so shine before men that they may see our good works. Glorify our Father which is in heaven. So what do we meditate on? Where's our, our mind continuing? You say, well, I, I just can't think about the things of the Lord all the time because I have to work. I don't want to cut my hand up on a saw or hurt myself with piece of equipment. That's not what that's talking about. That's talking always about, in, in the back of our minds, we know, in even the pre-conscious, subconscious of our mind, that we know that we know that we've been to the Word of God, the Holy Spirit's touched us, and that the, the very foundation of our faith is really embedded in, in our mind, in our heart. And those are the things that are so important to help us know how to pray, how to meditate, the words we should say, the words we shouldn't say. And we're continually having to, to ask the Lord to not only forgive us, but even one another in the family of God. So we can be acceptable in His sight. Because the more we're into His Word, with the Holy Spirit leading us and guiding us in the precious Word of God, tells us how to live, how to walk with Him, how to talk with Him. Why? Because the more we're into His Word, the more we know how God thinks. We know how to pray. We know how to approach Him. We know how to petition because a lot of times people think, oh, I just prayed about this, I prayed about that. But is it God's will? Well, I meditated on it. Yeah, but is it, God's, is it God's plan the way you meditated, I meditated? Does it, does it approve him to him? Is he approved of it? Those are the things that are very important. He said, let the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be acceptable. Acceptable in thy sight as you see us, Lord. O oh Lord, he says, my strength and my redeemer. That sums it all up right there. Even in the old covenant, David, who had even been a mess up in his own life, but yet he was the apple of God's eye. Because he even recognized his sin. He said, Lord, restore unto me the joy of my salvation. He repented. There was always a price to pay, but God forgave him. And David was the apple of God's eye. Special place in God's heart for King David. Now, if you would, turn with me hurriedly to Philippians, because this is this is going to go together. I used this passage of Scripture a while back. I read it, and uh, it needs more attention. I don't even think we'll give it proper attention even this evening, as, we, as I would like to uh, in the future, when I say proper with more of a full content and understanding. Paul writes here in Philippians, the church in Philippi. He said, Finally, brethren, after all the things that he had stated in this message to the church at Philippi, he said, finally, as he's wrapping up this last chapter of Philippians 4, verse 8, finally, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, 
whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. I'm going to go ahead and read the ninth verse. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. He was saying, I've learned this, and if you'll take this instruction, what the Lord has done for me, he'll do for you. What sort of things are true, it says. We need to be careful what we take in as truth. In this last year, I would say in this last three years of my ministry, and it intensified this last year, I have heard more so-called well-meaning people, including born-again, spirit-filled people, that believing in their heart that they have spoke what is the right things, what are the true things. And I've seen it mixed up with flesh. I've seen it mixed up with what they call Holy Spirit in filledness with being a, not only misquote, misapplication, but it become pharisaical and fleshly. we got to be careful that we don't get into ourself because it's in all things that he might have the preeminence. It's not we ourselves. He knows our frame, but just because our, he knows our frame is no excuse for us to evermore do what we want to do, think what we want to think, and think, well, the Lord told me to do it. God gets blamed for a lot of stuff. So whatsoever things are true, we need to make sure they're true. Whatsoever things are honest. You know, it's amazing how that we could have to be careful. And we, we all at one time or another, we've been guilty of it, or maybe at different times, we think, well, this I think is okay for us to do, and it's really honest. We're being honest before the Lord. The Lord's saying, no, you've made up your mind what you want to do, and you think I can accept it, and I won't. You take another look at that. Whatsoever things are really honest, whatsoever things are accurate, Whatsoever things are approved of him. Look here. Whatsoever things are just. You know, I, I never will forget. Uh, we had a, had a gentleman one time doing some work with us. And I waited for years and years to get anybody to help me do promotion. Cause, but we were traveling so much in 13 to 18 dates a month and, and uh, flying all over the country. And so I had to get some help. And there was a gentleman that uh, we took on. And we soon had to part ways because... His theory was, well, now business and uh, uh, Christianity are two different things. He said, I beg your pardon. If anyone on the planet is required to be honest and faithful in business, it ought to be the born-again child of God. God gets blamed for a lot of things. Paul talked about not being slothful in business, honor and preferring one another, Doing the right things, not just the right thing that we think is the right thing, but Lord, what would you have us to do? Whatsoever things are just. Whatsoever things the right thing to do. What is the right thing to do? What things are right before God to say yea and to say nay? The Bible does say that. Let your yea be yea and your nay be nay. Whatsoever things are pure, pureness, virtuous, it kind of goes along with one of the passages here later on in this verse. Whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, oh, there we are right now. Once again, whose report are you going to believe? You're going to believe the politicians of the world? You're going to believe the unsaved people of the world to try to justify everything's okay? Are you even going to believe everything that every preacher tells you? We need to be careful that it lines up with the Word of God. Whoever is doing the preaching, whoever is doing the teaching, if it doesn't line up with this Word of God, don't take it in. Don't take it in. It's not true. It's false. It's not what we learned in denomination. It's not what we learned in our church. It's not what we, we learned in, in an organization, but what is thus saith the word of God. I was thinking about this again as we were driving home again last night. I thought all different different uh, different times of driving there for back to sleep in the bus and we were driving home from having time with the kids at Christmas time. And I was thinking about this. Uh, 
so, well, so many things I was thinking about. And I'm thinking, Lord, what would you have us to do? What, what would you have us to do? As we're facing this, this, this year coming up, how do we how do we do this in in the church? How do we, how do we reach out to the people in these trying times? How how do we do it in the way that's acceptable to you? Um, how do we how do we give the right report? And of course, I just said it. We we go the very best we can by the guise and values of the Word of God, line upon line, precept upon precept. As I said a little earlier as I was coming up to this point, who's going to believe a report? Every every denomination, as I, I was talking about before, every church, every organization, they've got their own pet things that they want to personify, their own things they want to do. And I'm not saying that there's necessarily that they're wrong, but sometimes they let their, their pet things that they want or the thing they want to focus on override some of the more weightier things that need to be dealt with. Pretty soon it becomes almost like an obsession they want to push just one thing. We're to talk about the whole counsel of God. We're to talk about all of the word of God. And that's what I was trying to get at. Who's going to believe the report? We need to be careful with the report that we give to not only the unsaved, but we need to give the report properly to our brothers and sisters in Christ. If there be anything of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. People say, well, now that's just pretty much impossible. In ourselves, it is. And I dare say that we'll never have it mastered, but I know one thing. Paul said, I press toward the mark of the prize of the high God, Christ Jesus. Forgetting those things behind, I'm looking forward to those things that are ahead. This whole word of God speaks of being contrite, being repentant, being aware of who we are and what we aren't and what we need to change. This is the roadmap for our life. I've said it over and over again. We don't need another Bible. We don't need another Testament. We have the Holy Word of God. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with good gospel books. If they don't line up with the Word of God, what, what good are they? A lot of people have an opinion, but what is the expressed position of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? The God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, that triune God that we serve. What is their position and their position for themselves and to us and the position that they want us to take? Once again, the Bible says in all things, that he, our Lord, our Savior, our Redeemer, have preeminence. I was talking with my daughter this, this, last, uh, this last weekend at Christmas. Actually, this weekend we're still in. And we were talking about the order. God has placed us to take care of our own. He's placed us to take care of our families. We're supposed to even take care of ourselves, But we don't put anything before our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And at the same time, if we don't take care of our own, we're worse than an infidel. Those things that are honest, those things that are just, those things that are perfect in the sight of God. By the way, when it talks about being perfect in the Word of God, some people take that and run with it. What it means is being perfect in as far as we have accepted Christ as Savior and received his free pardon of, his, of salvation. So that has made us perfected in his sight, but we still have that sin nature once again. Not to be confused with that self-righteousness that so many come up with, because once again, we walk in this life still with a sin nature, I pray to God it's not carnal, but we got to be careful because sometimes even Christians can get involved in things that they get, shouldn't get involved with and they convince themselves, oh, we're right, we're right. We need to take another look at that. We need to take a look at what 
that last part of that verse, once again, I know I've said it three or four times. David signed off. He said, Oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And then in the New Testament, Paul, he puts his caption to it. And he said, Think on these things. Think on those things which you've learned and received and heard. You've seen. Those are things to meditate on. Those are things we need to take deep into our spirit, to our innermost being, and say, Lord, mold us, make us, fix us. Even we might have walked with you for 50, 60, 70 years, whatever it is, or longer, but Lord, we're still a work in progress. It's like David in another place said, Search me, O God, and know my heart today. See if there be anything that's there that's not clean, that there needs to be change. That needs to be our prayer every day. I know I have to pray that because in my weakness, he's strong. And in your weakness, he's strong. Especially if you're a child of God. That wonderful line, my Lord, my strength, and my Redeemer. Can you say, along with me and those that have accepted Christ as Savior, is he your Redeemer? People say, oh, he's my redeemer, but have you ever received him as your redeemer? That's why we just celebrated his birth here a couple of days ago. He came into this world, became flesh. That's God became flesh, dwelt among us, and beheld his glory over 2,000 years ago. He laid his life down the cross of Calvary, shed his blood. On the third day rose again for your justification and for mine. If you've never received Christ, I pray that even as you would be listening to me. And if you don't do it right now, you can do it anytime. Say, Lord, forgive me my sin. I'm in need of forgiveness. I'm in need of a Savior. I believe you died on the cross and rose again. Come into my heart. I now receive you as my Lord and my Savior. And one of these days when we say goodbye here, even if we don't have time, we may, we may say goodnight here, but we'll say good morning up there if you know Christ as Savior. I pray that you would take what we've said today and think about it. And uh, if you don't agree, take a look at the scriptures again and see what the Spirit of God would say to you. But I hope that you have not received Christ, you'd accept the Lord and Savior we're talking about. And for you that have received Christ and been in a backslidden condition or you're not where you ought to be, I pray, Lord, that, that, that uh, you would see the need to make that change and come back into the fold of his safety. Lord, I thank you for the time we've had together. I know it's been short. It's not been a full service, but people will have to understand, and I pray that they will. We felt it was so unsafe to go out among sick people and bring other people in that, that might be infected. So, Lord, we believe we've done the right thing. I think we've done the honest thing and what would be the appropriate thing to do and acceptable in your sight. I pray now, Lord, for these that are listening, if there's those out there that are listening and haven't accepted you as Savior, may this be a day of decision for them. And if not today, may it be soon. And also the same for the one that's not in a position where they need to be with you, whether it be called backslidden condition or whether it be just they've got out of line. Just pray, Lord, that they would understand and remember there's always you on the throne room with arms wide open saying, I'll pardon you if you'll just come to me. I'll no wise cast you out. And we thank you for this time we've had together. We thank you for your precious word. Now these that are listening, bless them, keep them safe, keep, keep them well. If they're sick, bring healing to their body. And we're going to be careful always to give you honor, praise, and glory. For in thy precious name we pray. Amen. I have some prayer requests. Oh, we're still going. We have some prayer requests. Lisa in Texas has the four girls that she wanted us to pray for. That was Lisa. Lisa in Texas. Lisa called in Texas. Uh -huh. We don't and know what Four to do girls with. wants to pray. Also, we talked to Sherry. Kenoshita here uh, just a few minutes before we started our telecast and uh, pray for the the uh, Brittany who's the one that's going through the physical problem right now. There's all definitely some illness there I believe with all the family but particularly with Brittany going through some uh, some uh, physical situations the doctor is working on. What's this other request? I can't Wendy read it. Wendy and Jim. And oh yeah, Robin. Wendy and Jim and, and Robin. Robin. They're all off the ranch. In fact, that's how we have the facility out there. 
I just thank the Lord for them so much. They just let us use the facility to any link that we want for the church. It's such a blessing that they've been and they're ill. And I pray, Lord, that uh, that uh, you touch them and, and all these other ones. Uh, John and Gloria Roberts, I haven't got the, the latest report on Gloria, but the family's making a decision what to do concerning Gloria. She's been on life support. He's been some of the longest running uh, supporters of the ministry and friends. And in fact, I grew up with uh, with Gloria. She just a few years older than myself, but we've known each other all these years. And she's uh, she's wired up to different machines and what have you. But uh, family needs support and prayer. What to do and what not to do. They need the guidance. And uh, I know there's got to be somebody else. Florine Garoni always remember her. She's Actually, Florine's been in better shape right now. I think the Lord's touching her. We praise the Lord for that. So I know I prayed before, but let me go ahead and pray for these people that are that are ill. By the way, if you have prayer requests, feel free. How do they get a hold of us on Facebook? They can call us ahead of time. You can call us ahead of time. Because uh, on our Facebook. Ho our home and office, is, is it okay to do that? Or is that mm -hmm. sure. okay? Our home and office is 661-213-4033. I was really a little intrepid to do that because we get so many sales calls. Uh, I'm still trying to pay off my student loan, according to what they say, and I haven't been to school for 60 years, I guess, so, <laughs> whatever, something like that. But uh, And then, of course, they want to take care of all my credit cards and debt, and, which we really thank God for taking care of those things. But there's all kinds of stuff they're asking us to, you know, either pay for or that we didn't order, that you're going to turn off the gas and lights and we got so many shams and scams out there going, and I just pray to God. Listen, people, be in prayer once again. This election isn't over yet. And for God to have his will. I've said many times he may be going to spank us, but at the same time, we need to pray for those that have the rule and authority over us, and that's the way it's going to be. We still need to pray for them. God can change things around. First of all, he needs us. He needs us as his born-again children. He needs to do a work in us. Because I know this, judgment starts in the house of the Lord, begins, and uh, we're far removed, as you've heard me preach, from where we were even 20, 30 years ago. And I know this, God is still standing there once again saying, I'm just waiting for you. It's my people which are called by my name, he says, will call out. He's going to answer us. Lord, for these requests that we just uh, were brought to our attention to, Lord, and if we left anybody out. We're so sorry about that, and I hope they'd understand. But Lord, we pray for these that have been mentioned, that uh, we're asking for requests. Lord, you heard us mention their names, and I just now ask, Lord, that you would answer this uh, petition and prayer and supplication according to your plan and purpose and your will. Bring healing to those that need healing. Bring restoration to those that need restoration. Whatever else is going on, Lord, that, uh, that even is an unspoken request and things we don't even know about. Lord, you know more about us than we know ourselves, so we pray that you would answer according to your will. Once again, in all things, all things, Lord, you might have the preeminence, and we, we always be able to accept that, and we'll accept it, because we know this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning us. You care about us, and we thank you for that. We love you, Lord. We thank you for the opportunity we've had to present the gospel once again. Pray for these once again that are sick. Help us to get back just as soon as possible in corporate worship. And uh, we pray this in thy name. Amen. Good evening. I've got to find out how to turn this off. While oh, we're still with you. You'll have to excuse us. We don't know what we're doing. Wendy's out knows what it usually does there. So while my wife is trying to figure this out, I think I'll get up. No. Don't get up, Don't she said. Me. Don't leave me. Make me Stay go. right here. I thought for a minute that was our cat and it's the typewriter. Yeah.